Mr. Gass. We, um, I think we just sent you the, the uh, depth chart. Um, you know, the big thing here is, um, you know, we've got an incredible opportunity in front of us here. You know, I think we've spent a lot of time. Our message has been kind of owning your role. Um, certainly a lot of people contribute to our team and our organization, not just players, but from a staff, support staff standpoint. Um, the other term that we're using is no opportunity wasted, right? So we want to continue to check the boxes with detail and discipline and effort in terms of how we prepare. We know that good preparation leads to confidence. Uh, and when we're confident, we can play fast, we can play physical, and we can really uh, execute at a high level. We know that it will take that against a really, really challenging opponent in the University of Texas. So, you know, we've worked hard around here um, to represent something, right? And uh, that, that stack logo, uh, the University of Louisiana, uh, we'd like to think that those are recognized and respected. And um, it's time for this team uh, to create its own legacy, right? And I think this is our first opportunity. You know, these guys work extremely hard year round. We're only guaranteed 12 of these. Uh, we work 350 plus days for an opportunity to compete 12 times. And you, uh, football is a very unique um, in that regard. You know, these guys sit around, they, they dream about it, they prepare for it, they work hard to get in position to do it. Um, you know, I'm excited to watch them play. Um, but you know, tomorrow for us will be an in-season Thursday, um, and we'll prepare for a great challenge in a top 25 matchup here against the University of Texas Longhorns in Austin, Texas uh, on Saturday. So what questions do we have here? Coach, um, as far as, you know, I was going back and, you know, you kind of know, it, but you look at their scores, man, they play a lot of really high scoring games. I mean, you look at their scores the last few years, they average, what, 42, 43 points a game. Do you do you foresee that kind of a game or is this matchup just totally different than a lot of those? Well, you know, I, I think it's hard to predict. You know, I think um, the key here is that you, you know, play each play. Um, you know, you put, try to, to put the players in position to have success uh, and certainly make decisions relative to the game and how it's going. Right? I mean, I don't think there's any uh, great predictor out there. I mean, I know Vegas has got a lot of over and under numbers and all that, but uh, and they're usually pretty close. I don't know what it is for this game, but, you know, in general, I don't, I don't necessarily get consumed with that. I think we're always aware of the personnel, uh, we're aware of, you know, what the opponent is capable of, and certainly conceptually and technically, you know, they're always trying to, you know, put the the pieces, you know, together the right way so that your players have a chance as a staff. So, you know, I think that uh, an opener in particular to me, uh, certainly with a new staff, it would be a challenge to maybe predict you know, what's going to happen from a production standpoint. So, uh, but in general, um, I do think that, you know, the Big 12 is a league where there's a lot of points scored and certainly, um, you know, Texas has explosive players on offense and, you know, can create some issues for you. And that's what we're concerned with. Talk about their wide receivers, if you would. Like, what, what are they? Are they mostly shifty? Do they have big guys? Like, you have a few big guys. What, what do their wide receivers look like? Well, I, I think uh, Josh Moore kind of is the, you know, ringleader and leader in that group. You know, I think he's uh, certainly a very capable player and has got experience. And, and they have a, I mean, we're talking about the University of Texas here now. Okay? They've, they've had the cream of the crop here pick of the litter, whatever you want to say, for a long time. So if they're at the University of Texas, it's, it's a pretty good chance they've got some ability. Uh, and the thing here is, you know, you take those guys and you put them in Coach Sarkeesian's system. He's done a great job of featuring the uh, talented players that he has. Uh, and there's no doubt that we're aware of that. Um, so, 
you know, I think as a whole, you know, they're not going to put a, a bad player out there on Saturday, you know. So everyone they put out there is uh, going to be pretty good, I would imagine. How, uh, how, Coach, how old or not old are the um, – Humphrey and Rubio injuries, and then the two things, I guess, related to that. Um, as far as on the O-line, would you be kicking Ken Marks out to tackle if Rubio were fully healthy anyway, or is that because of that? And and what is A.J. Gillich? I know Tyler Brown, he had said earlier, was dealing uh, with a little bit of injury, but what is A.J. Gilly shown you at, uh, at guard there? And then, obviously, on the D-line, um, how do you feel about the depth behind uh, Taylor with uh, Jaquan and, I guess, Hutchinson? Yeah, well, you know, Taylor's on the depth chart, and uh, he practiced yesterday. Um, I think that may actually be a little bit of a mistake on our sports information department standpoint there. Um, so, but Carlos Rubio is uh, questionable for the game. So uh, don't make too much of that Taylor Humphrey deal there. I think that's a typo. Um, but Carlos Rubio uh, has a lower body injury. Uh, he is questionable for the game. He was not able to participate yesterday. Did a few things today. Um, you know, typically for us, if you don't practice on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, there's a good chance that we're not going to play in the game. So, uh, but, you know, George Jackson's got a, uh, does that say middle body? Hmm, that's interesting. I've never heard that. Uh, he's got <laughs> um, general illness. Um, and then, you know, Sonny's got – Sonny will be back here in a couple of weeks. And then Andre Landry um, is injured and could potentially be out for the season. So, um, you know, in general, um, the only thing to report here would be Carlos Rubio is questionable for the game. Ken Marks will play left tackle, A.J. Gilly. Um, you know, we'll start the game at left guard. Tyler Brown is, is going to be just fine. Uh, he's, his injuries turned around pretty quick. So, um, overall here, the only significant injury with the report would be Carlos Rubio. How has Gilly shown in practice and would you be kicking Ken out no matter what, or is that because of the Rubio? Well, you know, Ken's played tackle in the past, um, you know, and, and, we work all these contingency plans in spring in uh, spring ball, summer training camp. I mean, uh, we've got a lot of confidence in AJ. He's had a terrific off season. Probably, you know, if you had to pick a, a guy in training camp that maybe had one of the better training camps, it would be him. So um, we're excited. You know, AJ's he's done a great job, and um, players trust him, and he's a very very capable player. Given how talented their offense, or excuse me, defensive line is, how much does this game really come down to your offensive line's ability to execute against what they bring to the table up front? Well, I, I would like to think that every football game, you know, there's a certain part of the game, you know, that, um, you know, you've got to compete at the line of scrimmage and on the edges, right? I mean, it's, it's no different, uh, no matter who the po opponent is, right? Now, Texas happens to have, you know, a defensive line like you order out of a catalog, you know. I mean, they, they've got a really special group uh, with some very unique players, um, you know, inside and on the edge as well. So, you know, I think um, it's, it's going to be a critical part of the game. Uh, there's no question for us it is that way every week on both sides of the ball. Um, we certainly would like to think that we put a premium on line of scrimmage play on both sides. and. Um, you know, it, it'll be a critical part of the game Saturday, like it always is. Coach, just to be clear, just to be clear, is it fair to say that Gilly's going to start at guard, whether Tyler had that recent injury or not? That's not part of that whole deal. Yeah, that's exactly right. A.J. Gilly um, is the starting left guard for the game. And, uh, Coach, what did uh, – I see – Chandler down there at number two quarterback, what did he do to kind of separate himself a little bit in that battle? Or is that potentially still a co-situation? Or is it just because of Chandler's experience in the 
in the system as much as anything else? Yeah, no, that, that um, Ben Wooldridge should be on there as well. I'm not exactly sure why he's not on there, but um, both those guys are considered backups to me, and we certainly haven't decided yet who's a, who's a backup is going to be. In terms of the travel roster, you know, with everything that happened with, with Urban Meyer, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the, was that affect what your decision will be or who's on the travel roster for you guys, a vaccination status at all? Say that one more time. I was just saying, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I was just curious, how much does vaccination status affect which players will be on the travel roster? We need to make those final decisions. Yeah, it has nothing to do with our decision. That's a personal decision. Um, you know, the good thing is I would say that the majority of our players are vaccinated. Um, so it has nothing to do with our personnel decisions. That's that's uh, each individual's personal decision relative to their situation. I don't really care about that when I'm talking about who's going to – we're going to put the best player out there. Uh, you had mentioned Montreal a few weeks ago, but obviously he must have had a pretty good grasp of the playbook for a freshman. Just talk about what's got him on this depth chart. Well, he's he's uh, he showed he can do it. I mean, you know, he's been very productive and not only in practice but in scrimmage settings. Um, he's a unique player. Um, you know, he's got you know he, he's he's intelligent. He's picked it up quickly, and he's been very productive. You know, uh, certainly he's going to get opportunities to carry the ball Saturday. When I saw him in the state championship game last year, I, I said he might be the most patient runner I've seen in a long time as a running back. I mean, is, is that something that is evident, or is it style change some with y'all? No, he, he is. Uh, he's got a little Le'Veon Bell to him, you know. I don't know if that makes sense. But right, right. I do think the guy has some of that. You know, he's a 215-pound back. Uh, he's got some body quickness, and uh, he's got really good instincts and vision. Uh, he's been tough to tackle, you know. Um, so we're, we're excited about him, and certainly, um, you know, that group is uh, chomping at the bit. You know, this, they've been working extremely hard, and, you know, Chris Amani. Montreal, TJ, Terrence, you know, all those guys have uh, had a good camp. For the fans that don't get to see it, could you kind of walk through what you guys do when you first get to Austin to kind of get acclimated to, this, to the scene there since, you know, it's a pretty big game and a, a big venue. You know, you have experience playing in big games in the past, but just for the fans, they don't really understand what you do to get acclimated. What do you do to, to get ready for a game like this? Well, we do uh, exactly what we do every week uh, since we've been here. You know, we, we do all our meetings and our walkthrough here um, in the AEM. You know, we shower up, uh, you know, get in our travel gear and uh, jump on the plane. We, when we get to the hotel, we usually eat dinner. Uh, we'll have some meetings in the evening, um, tip test tips, uh, one reel. Uh, we get them to bed, and uh, the next day we have, you know, a number of meetings and walkthroughs prior to departure to the stadium. You know, when we get to the stadium, we've got a, a position group warm up that we go through. Um, you know, we tape and dress, and get ready for pregame and go play the game. So uh, it's by the minute. I can promise you that. Coach, uh, y'all were obviously very good at kickoff returns last year. And I noticed they were pretty good at kickoff returns. How, how, kind of scary a little bit is their return game? Well, that's one of the areas where they've got a very capable player, you know, both in the punt return and the kick return. And, um, you know, we think we'll see some other players as well. But, you know, we're talking about, you know, verified track speed, elite, you know, Olympic level speed here with some of the best players in the country blocking for them. So it's going to be a big part of it. You know, I think they're um, – you know, from a kickoff return standpoint for us, they're, they're high percentage touchback. You know, I think it's like 75% touchback. So um, if we do get an opportunity, uh, we'll need to make the most of it. Uh, but I do think that it's a part of the game. Uh, you know, around 20% of the game is played on special teams. And 
you know, it'll be a critical part. We certainly put it, we make it extremely important around here and we've got a plan. It's just going to be a matter of going and executing the plan. Speaking of executing your plan, how important is it for you guys to get off to a good start? Obviously they're, they're putting in a new offense and you guys are pretty experienced. So how much would it really put the game in your hands if you're able to, to put some points on the board in the first quarter? Well, we like to do that every week. Certainly this week would be no different. Um, you know, there's a lot of research about who scores first, you know, and how that affects, you know, the end result. But you know, regardless if we get ahead or get behind, you know, we got to continue to play um, and make decisions in the best interest of the team each and every opportunity that we have. So uh, starting fast um, certainly is always important. It'll be important Saturday as well. Coach, did you even uh, – go ahead, Tim. Uh, did you get all of your players who might have been – had families impacted by the hurricane back as you had hoped on Tuesday? And is everybody going to be good to go despite what's going on back home? Yeah, we, we had a handful that evacuated uh, that maybe got back a little bit later. Um, but in general, I think, you know, we're kind of putting our plans together to help all those people. Uh, you know, quite a few – uh, in New Orleans, they're having to relocate, uh, and certainly those surrounding areas you know, went, are going through some difficult things. So, uh, but you know, we had a few, a handful that had decided that they were uh, going to evacuate. We got back a little bit later, and rightfully so. Uh, but in general, um, you know, I'm just happy that everybody's safe. Um, you know, and, and certainly we're going to do everything we can do to help everybody as we, you know, get going here. Coach, did you even, or you or your staff even mention like Iowa State this week in prep, once y'all started actual game preparation, or I know it's a new year and all, can that help you all at all in a game like this? Or do you do, just totally ignore going into a game like this? Well, I think it's completely different, you know, um, I mean, you're just talking about a different organization, different personnel, different year. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's just a completely different set of variables. Now, I mean, we've got experience. I mean, certainly, uh, but it's not something that we've really talked about a lot. I think we all know this is a completely different challenge. And, you know, we're focused on the things relative to this challenge. Nothing that happened last year in Ames, Iowa is going to help us Saturday. That's for sure. Did um... – I know Josh had put something out earlier about the volleyball program having to pull out of a tur tournament this weekend because of uh, COVID contact tracing issues. Have you guys had any problems at all with that, like in the last week or so? I know you'd mentioned one at the start of camp, but are you guys all clear on that or are there concerns there? No, we're, we're good to go. No issues there. Okay. And then I had one other quick uh, depth chart question, if I could. Uh, sure. On the running backs, um, it looks like they're kind of down one, two, three, four. Should there be some oars there with those backup guys, or is that kind of how they how they came out established coming out of out of camp in in this past week? I'd say that's pretty accurate. Gotcha. Coach, uh, hey, no one... Go ahead. You're, you're fine. Hey, coach. Um, knowing Sarkeesian personally and just knowing what he brings to the table, how much of an edge does that bring to your defense? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't know that there's anything relative to that that would affect you know our defense. I mean, I think players got to play, right? So we'll put the ball down and do our best. And um, but you know, I mean, I, this is a common thing. This is no different than. This happens every week in college football. We're all at some point or another. There's a lot of connections with some of the teams that you play. And this, this Saturday would be no different. Um, we've got a ton of respect uh, for Coach Sarkeesian and, and his career and what he's accomplished. And I'm, I'm really excited for him and, uh, um, you know, what he's getting ready to build here at Texas. And certainly uh, Saturday will be an exciting day for everybody. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Thank you all.
All right, we got Reese Burns up here. Go ahead whenever you guys are ready. How y'all doing? Hello, sir. How are you? Well, I know you were, you know, we all went to Iowa State and played real well, but the atmosphere is going to be very different from the punter and the mechanics of everything. How could that be more complicated with so more fans, that many fans in Austin on Sunday, Saturday? Um, I don't think it's going to affect the punt at all. Um, since I was young, growing up, I've always wanted to play in front of massive crowds, and it's always been a dream of mine. So I'm just super excited for it. Um, it will be unreal, to be honest. I'm re really looking forward to it and hoping it's as loud as possible. Does it make any difference when you're punting, though, just in terms of, like, what you're seeing and depth perception and things like that, or is it – stadium's the same? No, there's no difference to me. Um, I'll get out there and look what kind of rush or hold-up look they're in and um, just be watching my snapper and watching the ball. So I'm not really focused on all that. What do you like about Chris as a as a punt and kick returner? You know, since you're obviously kicking the ball to him in practice, what does he really bring to the table um, as a dynamic runner in that from that position? Yeah, he's he's unbelievable. Um, he's super fast. So if you give him a bit of space, then he's definitely going to take it somewhere. Um, you know, you don't see athletes like that growing up in Australia. He's the he's the fastest person I've ever seen in real life. So he's definitely dangerous and, and scary to kick anywhere near. What's the confidence of this team like headed into this road trip? Yeah, it's extremely confident. Everyone's everyone's looking forward to it. Um, everyone's obviously excited for, for the new season and just ready for football to get started. So everyone's pumped up. You know, you get to see this team every day outside of the, you know, your punting and kicking units. So what do you – like, what's got you excited about, whether it's the offense or the defense or overall going into this season that where you feel like y'all can be even better than y'all were last year? Uh, I think the experience is a massive thing. Um, obviously, having Levi back at quarterback is a massive part. But also, if you look at our O-line, um, all those guys coming back is huge. And defensively, uh, I wouldn't want to play against our defense there. They're pretty crazy. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't want to be playing against any of these guys. Obviously, you're not going to give anything away. But, I mean, are you ready for a few trick plays this season if they call your number to, to whatever they need you to do, whether it's throw the ball or, or, or pick up a first down? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I've been, I've been looking for that ever since I got here. So, hopefully, hopefully it gets cold, but you never know. But if it does, I'll definitely be ready for it. Um, you know, it can, it can get a bit boring punting it every time. So hopefully they throw one in there. Do they have Fox back home? No, they don't, unfortunately. Um, so hopefully my, my family are going to try and find the live stream and um, see it that way. So I hope they can get to watch it. If not, I know they'll be listening in. What do you feel like, even though obviously y'all didn't have many fans when y'all went to Ames last year, just winning that game, how much do you feel like that helps you and your teammates confidence-wise going into this game? Yeah, I feel like it's always huge when when you knock off a team like that. Um, just makes the team feel like they belong, gets the season off to a great start. So it's always it's always massive to knock off a, a big program. And, um, yeah, I feel like it, it, was, it was a big confidence booster just to get going for the rest of the season, just to start off 1-0, regardless of who we really play. New uh, new snapper for you, uh, Reese. What what can you tell us about Bob? Excuse me about Bobby and uh, what's it been like, kind of getting accustomed to that? Yeah, he's he's been really great um, so far. He's got a lot of a lot of game experience. He's been to a lot of schools and started at a fair few of them. So he's really really consistent, um, good velocity, and always on the right spot. So it's been it's been an easy transition. He's been he's been really good to work with. Or do they all, is it six, one, half dozen, the other, or does every deep snapper have like little nuances that in terms of how they deliver the ball or where they deliver it, what the spin is, those kind of things. It's all, it's always a little different, but you know, it's not, it's not nothing major. Um, you wouldn't be able to tell bloody open eye and you get used to it pretty quick. So yeah, he was, he was really, really easy to get used to. This could be a really close matchup. So just how important do you feel going to this game since field position could be such a critical point to decide the game? Yeah, field position will be massive in this matchup. So I'm really looking forward to um, giving us the edge in that in that department. Um, whenever 
whenever you play a game, I feel like field position always is is a big thing. And if I can, or if we can pin them deep, and you know we got some crazy guys on that that coverage unit that are really good, um, then it'll be a long way for for their quarterback to go. So hopefully, just pin them deep as possible. Do you feel like you're a better punter now than a year ago? And if so, why? Yeah, I feel like I'm a way better punter than a year ago. Um, this is the healthiest I've ever been going into a season. Um, it's the strongest I've ever been going into a season and definitely the most consistent I've ever been hitting the ball. Um, I can obviously rugby, which we've seen a lot of, but I've been hitting very consistent pocket punts as well and um, just feel like my game has expanded a lot. So I'm definitely feeling good coming into this year, more so than any other year. Did you get to travel back at home at all during the off-season race or because of COVID, uh, were you not allowed to go back? Yeah, unfortunately, because of COVID, I wasn't allowed to. So it's coming up to two years now, so I haven't, haven't been home for a while. And my family can't come in to any of the games. So hopefully this Christmas, if everything opens up, um, I can get back home. How, Tell us about how, that. How, go ahead. How, just to follow up real quick on that, like just mentally, how – how has that been on you and how have you handled that? Yeah, it's definitely hard. Um, you know, your whole family and all your friends you knew growing up are all back home. You haven't seen them for a while. Um, technology makes it a lot easier with FaceTime and all those sorts of things. But yeah, I miss them every day. Um, but, you know, it's I'm making them proud by being over here and um, trying to do the best I can to get my degree and play well. So I know they're happy for me. I know I'll be back soon. You know, time flies. So I'll be back over there soon. You seem like you got the personality where you probably got a lot of friends over here, though. Yeah, I got I got a lot of friends over here, so I really enjoy um, getting to know all, all different people and all different walks of life. Um, you know, it's, it is good fun. So. Tell us about the um, Kenny and, and and the kickers and how what do you see from them in practice as far as maybe improving over last year as well. Yeah, um, they're both they're both improved. Um, Kenny, you know, he he didn't miss last year once he got in there, so um, he's coming in really confident. Um, he's been kicking really well, so he, he barely misses. He's um, he's really accurate. So Nate Nate's really good as well. He's definitely improving on his accuracy, and he's just got a massive leg, so a lot of power. Um, yeah, those guys are both doing great and been working very hard to to get better. Are you friends with uh, Kendra on the softball team? Have you guys kind of got to know each other since you're both from Australia? And have you gotten to help each other, you know, get through this whole process of being this far away from home? Yeah, I, I speak to her a little bit. Um, actually, when I was on the plane over here, she was on the same plane. She was wearing a Raging Cajuns hoodie. So I went up and spoke to her because I didn't know she was on the softball team. So that's how I met her was coming over from Sydney. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty funny. And she does well over here. She she really likes it, and she's obviously a great pitcher. I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to face her. Do you ever play uh, baseball, or do they have cricket in uh, Australia or anything, or no? Yeah, I played I played cricket. I lo loved cricket, so um, it's a bit hard to play over here. But I've tried picking up baseball. It's a bit of a different swing. I'm not not too good at it. What do your friends back home tell you? You know, when they hear how successful you are. Yeah, they love it. Uh, my friends, my friends are really supportive, and um, they all all like American football more so NFL than college. Um, but they still they still watch our games when when we're on ESPN and that over there, and they're always sending me videos. You know, it's normally <laughs> pretty early in the morning, so they're normally still going from the night before. So they're normally pretty up and about. <laughs> Who were some of your role models as kickers and, and punters uh, growing up that you like? You know, in the NFL or in the college game. Um. Basically, just my pro kick coach, Nathan Chapman. Um, I wanted to play Australian rules football growing up and didn't really know too much about American football. Um, and when I first started out, I actually wanted to be a, a wide receiver. <laughs> and I loved Calvin Johnson. Once I realized how, how quick and how tall these guys are over here, I went, All right, I might as well start punting the ball. Um, so I didn't really have a punting role model. I wanted to play more of a big position, but uh, just fell into punting and hit up pro kick and yeah, that's how it went. So does your family know more about football than when you got here or not so much? Yeah, a hundred percent. They know, they know a lot now. Um, my first year, they had no idea what was going on and would just watch and hoping to see me out there. They didn't really understand how fourth down or anything like that works. So now they understand the rules and they're diehard Cajun fans. They're, they're really supportive and just love, love the game. So they're, they're cheering. They know all the players' names and, 
Yeah, and I love it. So they understand now that you, you joked with them about like, hey, mom and dad, like I don't come out in case the if the offense has to do bad three times for me to come out and kick the ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's sort of that's sort of uh, it's bittersweet when I come out there. You know, my my dad especially loves loves Levi. <laughs> he, he loves how, how he moves. So um, he's he's a, I think he's a bigger Levi supporter than he is me. But who do you have for your uh, shield guys this year, Reese? And how's it compared to last season? Yeah, we got we got the same shield, so that's massive. Um, those guys have all all played a whole year, um, being in there, and they understand exactly what to do and how I like to move around back there. So yeah, that's massive to have those exact same guys back there. Our punt team actually is pretty much identical from last year um, without Paul. So yeah, that's that's massive for us. Everyone's very experienced. Does that allow y'all, because of all that experience, to actually get better, or is it kind of get redundant where y'all just kind of been doing the same thing for two years? Definitely to get better. Um, you know, it's everyone's everyone's done it before and they know exactly what to do. And there, um, there's obviously still areas that every single one of us can improve on, but um, I think that our punt team is unbelievably good their coverage fails me out a lot of the time so I'm very lucky to have those guys the new special teams coach is, have you noticed a difference is it more just personality or is there any difference to the approach of it all uh, more so personality I'd say you know that's my that's my third special teams coach since I've been here and they've, they've all been a little different but all of them have been great um, just great people really is the main thing um, they actually care about me off the field and um, yeah, that means a lot to me. So he's, he's been really good since he's came in here. And um, yeah, I go up and talk to him very often. Good luck, Reese. Thanks, Thank Reese. You. Thank you. Have a good night. We'll have offensive lineman Max Mitchell up here in a second. All right, we got Max Mitchell. Go ahead whenever you guys are ready. What's it well, feel Max, like to finally have this game, you know, come to fruition? Oh, it's uh, it's definitely a load going to be taken off. Um, been talking about it for two years or three years since I've known about it. You know, I have a bunch of relatives who go to Texas or have gone to Texas. And uh, so we've been chirping back and forth with it. And obviously the media is covering it pretty heavily. So it's going to be a load taken off for sure. What have those conversations with the team been like, knowing that you're going into this bigger, uh, you know, wilder atmosphere? Um, we're excited. Uh, we're excited to mainly have a bunch of fans back. Um, you know, we've been practicing with crowd noise, uh, the, the teams. We haven't really um, talked about it specifically. You know, we've the starting line, uh, me and Ken, uh, I think were the only ones there for Mississippi State or Alabama. I think that was the most we've played in front of in a while. Um, but I think we'll be fine. I think uh, the team's not too worried about it. Just talk about we thought y'all were going to have all the linemen back and for Carlos to be out and now AJ to be in. Just talk about a little bit of an unsettling, maybe, um, you know, different line, starting lineup there. Talk about that. Yeah, uh, obviously we wanted Carlos to be healthy and, and ready to go for the game, but um, – you know, we need AJ to step up. I think he's doing a good job so far. Um, you know, through the two or three years he's been here, he's, he's matured a ton. Um, you know, Ken next to him is going to help him out big time with all that experience. Um, you know, we have a couple more guys we can fill in at guard if, if something else happens or, you know, we want to make a change. Um, I, I, I think we're pretty confident where, we're, where we stand. Even what, that their offense is – What's AJ like? Just, you know, we don't know a lot about him, just personality wise and kind of what he brings to the table. Yeah, he's a pretty reserved guy. Um, he's a real, real cool. He's, he's real down to earth. Um, you know, he just kind of goes about it, goes about his business. Um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's pretty funny, uh, when he, when he talks, but, um, he's a cool guy. He, you can rely on him. 
given that, you know, their offense is in transition, learning a new offense, and this is a big game, how critical is it for you guys to really get off to a good start offensively? And would that really put pressure on them, you know, to give you guys the edge, uh, you know, on the road? Oh, yeah. Um, we've talked about this a lot. You know, last year, I uh, felt like we were sleepwalking through the first half of, you know, seven, eight games we played. Um, and, and we've really emphasized that we need to start faster. We need to start better. And uh, we need to come out with a, a, a better attitude, um, a better approach, um, just overall start better. So that's something we've, we've, I, we've been practicing for, you know, however many months we've been off. And then given that, how do you guys prevent, you know, being antsy in the offensive line, preventing like false starts and things like that? Obviously, there's a lot of nerves going in since you've been waiting for this game for a while. Yeah. Um, so Texas actually does some stems um, that we've, we've covered. Um, you know, they, they move, you know, right before we, we get going. Um, we've been practicing that. Uh, you know, we've been talking about it for, you know, two weeks. Um, so I think we'll be, we'll be just fine. We've practiced with crowd noise. So um, I think we'll be ready for it. How old were you when they won the 2011 New Orleans Bowl, Max? Uh, I was 11. So do you remember the illegal stemming uh, penalty? No. Uh -uh. <laughs> Ask somebody who's been around a while. <laughs> okay. I'll find out. So when things, like when everything is the same from Shane on over to your right side, but things are a little different on the left, how much does it impact you guys just like in terms of pulling or anything like that? Or does it not really matter for you guys who's doing it over there? Um, you know, we, we don't really, uh, it doesn't affect us a ton, but um, it can definitely come into play if, if we have to communicate something from one side to the other. Um, given that it's two guys who have been here for years, I don't know if it'll have that much of an impact. Um, since we've done so much playing and, and good chemistry together, you know. So um, I don't think it'll have much effect, to be honest with you. Just walk us through what this week's been like for you guys as players, you know, having some players evacuate, having some players stay, and just still trying to be focused on this game. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we, you know, we obviously didn't get much here, but um, a couple of guys had families affected. Um, you know, Coach had something that, you know, they went and talked to Coach about, you know, some of the, their family had an issue with or something that we were going to help out. Um, I, I'm not sure how many guys exactly were affected. I know a couple were, um, but uh, not too much to an extent. You know, I don't think we had that much of an effect besides, you know, those the couple guys. So when it was all said and done, how much did you end up working somewhere other than at right tackle, whether it was at left tackle or whatever? you know, since camp started? Yeah. Um, so I didn't work a ton. Um, you know, obviously, I, I still kind of understand the concepts well enough to play it. Um, I did play a little bit. I did rotate um, a little bit in between positions there. Uh, I left tackle, but um, not as much as, as previously. Anything else? I'm good. Thanks, Thank Max. Thanks, Max. It. All right, that's it for tonight. Thanks, guys. Thanks.